returning a static list as JSON, as we did in the previous screencast, is all good, but now it's time for sending JSON to the server. Normally, this would be the let's register user example, but in our case, it will be the soldier joins the night's watch example. Before we implement the registration method, let's open up the soldier class and add a new date variable like this, our joined or registration date. Now, once a soldier joins the night's watch, we expect this date to be set. All right, back to our controller. Let's create a new join method by copying our previously created method, rename the method to join, change the um, HTTP request path also to join, and the request method to post. We want to send the user soldier, user slash soldier, as a JSON object in the HTTP request body, and hence we need to add the soldier as a method parameter and most importantly, annotate our new parameter with Spring's request body annotation. And this annotation will tell Spring to automatically convert the JSON object, the client sends, to a Java object. And finally, we want to return the newly registered soldier as well, so let's change the method's return type. The join method itself is very straightforward. And we only want to do three things. A, give the user a join date, simply like this. B, add the user to our static user list. And a quick uh, caveat. So arrays as list produces an immutable list and you can't add any new users to it. And if you want to be able to add new users, we have to change things a little bit like this. And C, return our user to the caller of the method or to the client immediately. What does that mean? Um, that once our client calls the method, you immediately get back the newly registered user as JSON. Demo time. Now, as always, let's start the application by right-clicking it and running the um, application class. Now, let's open up our REST client change the request method to post and the path to slash join. And note, make sure to send the right accept header as you learned in the previous screencast. Let's enter the JSON for a new soldier, brackets, and then we need a name and number of battles. And we're almost good to go. Well, now that we're not only receiving but sending JSON, we also need to make sure to specify a proper content header type. Uh, content type header, excuse me. So let's do that. Okay, we're good to go. Let's try it out. Great, it works. Once we submit our request, we immediately get back a response which shows that our joint date has been set. Now, just to make sure, Let's also call our soldiers method from before, and we would now expect it to return our two old soldiers, as well as the one we just registered. For that, let's change the path, and the HTTP method back to get, and hit the submit button. Great, that also works. Congratulations, you can now send and receive JSON objects.